Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So we've had a lot of requests to make a video expressing our thoughts on the case in Italy where a toddler was taken away from its parents because it was malnourished. It was apparently being fed a vegan diet. Now let's just start off by saying that this isn't really a vegan issue. This is just about bad parenting, right? Being vegan doesn't automatically make you a a great parent, you God know, sticker, God no. stick a parent. Um, you could still be a really bad, shitty parent, even though you eat a vegan diet. This is simply about not feeding your kid enough food, and that can happen on any diet. So let's look at one of the many articles that are on the internet at the moment and see if we can delve in a little bit further. So the story is the toddler was 14 months old and he weighed only slightly more than a three month old child. He was suffering from dangerously low calcium levels and complicating matters, he had to undergo an emergency operation because of a congenital heart condition, which was aggravated by his low calcium levels. So this line in particular stood out for us from this article. The case forces us to reflect on uncommon feeding regimes. Uncommon feeding regimes. Sounds like, ooh, a bit, God, what are they talking about? It really stands out for us because we've reached a place in the world where an uncommon feeding regime is actually feeding your kids what we're designed physically and anatomically to eat, which are whole plant foods. Now sure, these parents obviously did a horrific job at that, um, but an uncommon feeding regime, nah, you know? So the media loves these kind of stories. They come up every now and again and they just run with it. So a quick Google search shows you how many articles were published all over the world using sensational headlines causing that dramatic effect. Yeah, vegan diet not for babies, strict vegan diet, severe malnutrition, vegan baby taken away from parents. And what this does is it scares the crap out of parents even potentially thinking about feeding their child a plant-based diet, lest they come out with one ear, a horn growing out of their head and whatever else, you know? So there's a lot of fear mongering that's stirred up by the media. So why does the media do this? Well, it sells a lot of newspapers and gets a lot of clicks online. But if we delve a little bit deeper, the media is also part of the financial, military, legal, industrial, meat, medical, pharmaceutical media complex. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> Basically, all of these institutions are in collusion with one another to uphold and protect the status quo. So for example, if we look at one of the top Google results, uh, the Washington Post article, for example. Well, who owns the Washington Post? Quick Google search will show you that it's a guy by the name of Jeff Bezos, or Bezos, who is the owner of Amazon.com. But if we look at uh, Jeff's personal investments, we can see that he is invested in a company that supports cancer patients, uh, a company that manufactures cancer biopharmaceuticals, is also supporting a company that is involved in healthcare, as well as the development of software for healthcare appointments specifically. So do you think someone like Jeff <laughs> has a financial interest in downplaying and basically making people fearful about a diet that is scientifically proven to prevent, treat, and even reverse many of our leading causes of death? So it's just interesting that we get this kind of media response to the rare cases of really crappy parenting on a vegan diet and just not feeding their kids enough of the right foods. And yet, when the World Health Organization released a report last year placing processed meats in the same class category as asbestos and cigarettes, the media were like, nah, moderation, everything in moderation. You know, you can take your child, your toddler to McDonald's and feed them the chicken nuggets. What's in the chicken nugget? Who knows? Who knows, Who exactly. Knows? And no one, no one better than no, no, no. You know, I, that's, that's moderation. But a vegan parent doesn't Ooh. feed their child enough food. Oh, everyone <laughs> loses their shit. Yes. I mean, when was the last time we saw a news headline yeah. that said, uh, you know, malnourished toddler taken away from om omnivorous parents? You I've know? never seen that. And don't get us wrong, we are not defending the parents no. here. It was absolutely disgusting what they did, and they should have the child taken away from them. So not only does all this media hype really deter people from thinking about a plant-based diet for themselves, let alone for their kids, it also builds this stigma around the word vegan. When actually the majority of people are raising their kids on a very standard diet full of animal products, meat, dairy and eggs. Which, which are, are scientifically linked to 14 of the 15 leading causes of our death. 
What the media should ideally be raising awareness about and what parents should be concerned about is the fact that our leading cause of death, heart disease, is actually detectable in our children and in fact in the womb. Because atherosclerosis can start even before birth and depend on what our moms ate. Fatty streak formation occurs in human fetal arteries and is greatly worsened by how high the pregnant mother's cholesterol is. They looked at the arteries of fetuses from mothers with normal cholesterol levels and from pregnant moms with high cholesterol, and fetal arteries from mothers with high cholesterol contained dramatically greater lesions. This suggests not only that heart disease may start much earlier than we previously assumed, but that it depends on maternal cholesterol levels. So the question is not, is it okay and is it safe to raise your child on a vegan diet? The question rather should be, is it okay and safe to raise your kid on a non-vegan diet when you're putting them at an increased risk of developing the leading causes of death, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, some types of cancers, and many more. Is a plant-based diet, a vegan diet, actually safe? Well, of course it is. This is the position of the American Dietetic Association that a well-planned vegetarian diet, including a total vegetarian or vegan diet, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and for athletes. So the toddler in question was deficient in both calcium and iron. As we said from the beginning, for the child who had been that underweight, clearly the child wasn't being enough, fed enough food in total to begin with. But then how do you plan a vegan diet for a toddler to make sure that it's getting everything it needs? Well, if you head over to the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine website, they have all the details. So we're going to link this page on their website down below, and it is such a good read. It's very comprehensive, has all the information you need. They specifically talk about calcium and also iron, listing all the plant foods and how you can make sure your baby and toddler gets what they need. And they even provide a guide for further planning from five to six months and six to eight months, and it goes on and on, showing you what kind of foods you need to feed your baby and how you can meet all the nutritional requirements. And they've even included a sample meal plan. So it's not rocket science, you're just gonna eat enough of the right foods. So these are our thoughts on the topic, and now we want to hear from you guys. Post down below what are your thoughts and what are your experiences if you are a vegan parent. Share them with us. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Tearing families apart. It just shows a total and utter lack of compassion and disrespect and apathy. And more than anything, it's a lack of education. Again, we, you know, all those words you just used, yeah. that was us.